Hey, in today's video we're going to talk about VNAV. VNAV is an acronym for Vertical Navigation. By the end of this video you will know why VNAV is important, how VNAV helps the airline pilots and how does the computer actually calculate the path using VNAV. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriele from PilotClimb.com. I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737. If you are trying to become a better pilot or make your head around the aviation world, this is the right channel for you. Consider subscribe so you will not miss the next video. Before starting the actual topic for today, the VNAV, I want to make sure that you leave me in the comment below any questions you may have throughout the video. For me, it's extremely important that you get 100% of this content. Okay, let's jump into the VNAV or vertical navigation. What is VNAV? VNAV. In order to understand VNAV, we have to think in another way. When you fly in a small aircraft in a very easy operation, low altitude, it's extremely easy to know when you can start the descent from your uh, cruise down to the runway, okay? Because you see outside, you see the runway that is extremely close to you, and you get this kind of a feeling that you should start descent. But once you jump into an, an airliner, and Boeing 737 in my case, what you will find that you're gonna fly super high, super high altitude, such as 40,000 feet, 41,000 feet, and you're gonna fly into a difficult airspace, a busy airspace with a lot of restrictions, okay? So let's say you fly into Madrid, for example, which is a quite busy airport, and you have this arrival, and I made a separate video where I talk about these procedures, I will link the video in the description below, but you're gonna fly into this approach where if you start the descent, when you start the descent, you're gonna have a lot of restriction throughout your descent. You're gonna have a restriction uh, after 50 miles, for example, of your descent, you need to be at or below a specific altitude, then you need to be at or above another specific altitude 20 miles after, and so on, okay? So in an ideal world, it will be super easy, because in an ideal world, you arrive at your top of descent, and then you start the descent all the, all the way down to your runway, okay? In an ideal world with no restrictions. What you do normally, you try to keep your thrust idle in order to burn less fuel and uh, produce less CO emissions. But unfortunately, when you fly into the complex airspace and with the restriction and so on, you need to calculate your descent many, many times. Okay? Because let's say your airport is 100 miles away, but be between your airports and your position, you have a lot of altitude restrictions in between and you need to comply with them. Okay? So to calculate the top of descent, without restriction is quite easy, but to calculate multiple top of descent and multiple descents in order to comply with the restriction is a little bit, a little bit more complex. And as well as you can imagine uh, that the airliners can vary the weight of the aircraft quite substantially. So you might one day you might fly with a 737 that that weight is 45,000 kilograms, 50,000 kilograms, and one day you can fly a 737 with with a weight of 70 tons, 65 tons. So as you can see, the same aircraft, but we've got 15 tons of difference in weight, and this difference in weight will change your aircraft performance throughout the descent. Okay, so. Then we introduce VNAV, and the VNAV goal is to help the pilot through the climb, the cruise, but most importantly during the descent, in order to comply with the restriction and to calculate the path in a correct way, to calculate the top of descent. So to give us a point where we are actually cruising and the VNAV will calculate and will tell us, okay, listen, you need to descend here in order to comply with this altitude restriction, then you have to descend there in order to comply to the other altitude restriction, you need to descend here because you need to slow down and so on. Okay, this is a big step forward for the aviation and for the pilots because without the VNAV you, you have to make your calculations. But as a human, we cannot really make a very precise calculation. We can do a rough calculation, which is still quite accurate. But if you need to be um, uh, at below certain altitude, a certain point in restrictions, you really need to be very, very specific and clear and correct. And as well as the VNAV will allow you to uh, fly at higher levels for more, uh, with, uh, for longer times, okay, and it does re reducing, the, uh, reducing the fuel consumption, the CO emissions, this is extremely important, because let's imagine you do your calculations in a rough way, okay, there is a rough way that mainly tells you 
if you if you take your altitude, let's say you've got uh, you're flying at thirty thousand feet, okay, and you multiply the thirty of the thirty thousand by three, okay, that gives you ninety. There is this uh, uh, rough calculation that tells you if you take your altitude, you multiply by three, that gives you the miles that you need to lower the, that you need to uh, descend from your altitude down to zero, okay. So let's say you are cruising at thirty thousand feet, and in the ideal world, without take a rough calculation, will be thirty multiplied by three nine. That means that 90 miles before your uh, uh, your your airport, you need to start a descent. Okay, but this is a rough number, and as you can see. And imagine many pilots before before Vinav, they were actually taking some extra miles to make sure that if there was anything else, they were actually below the path, they were not above. Because the biggest risk without Vinav is that you make your calculation, you do the wrong calculations, and then you find uh, you suddenly find yourself very high on profile. Thus, you need to d uh, dive and increase the energy of the aircraft, and then you're gonna go into the high energy situation, which is not ideal. But with the Vinav, since it does all these calculations for you depending on what data you put in the FMS that will give you exact the point where you start the descent the point where you have to start the deceleration the, the, and a correct descent all the way down with idle trust normally okay Dave enough actually calculates the path going backwards so it will start from the runway and then it's gonna go backwards in order to calculate when to start the descent okay there are multiple factors that affect the VNAV the top of descent for the VNAV such as the uh, altitude constraints on the waypoints your weight the wind the q and the pressure the temperature and so on so as you can see and now we're gonna go into the whiteboard in a second where we do actually a practical example depending on everyday conditions it will take into consideration all these things and then it will give us a top of descent from your cruise. So let's jump right into the whiteboard and I'll show you with a practical example how does the VNAV calculate when to start the descent. In a whiteboard we're gonna do first an example where we actually calculate the descent from the top of descent all the way down to the runway in an ideal situation when there is no winds, when the weight of the aircraft is a standard weight, there are no altitude restrictions throughout the uh, descent. So you will see that it will be quite straightforward to calculate that. However, when you add to your descent the real world scenario, when you have wind changes, the weight is not always the same, you call altitude restriction throughout the approach, you will see that the things becomes a little bit more complicated and you will see how important is the VNAV. So in ideal world, let's say you're here, okay, you're cruising, and in here, this is your top of descent, and you do an uh, idle three degrees uh, descent all the way down to the runway. Okay, this is your runway, and so on. So fantastic! This is, will be an ideal sh scenario with no winds and everything. So since we said, let's say that this is flight level three hundred, in order to calculate your top of descent, you simply take the th the first two digits here, the thirty, and you multiply them by three. And that gives you 90. So this means that 90 miles before your runway, you need to start the descent in order to perform this continued descent. Okay. Again, this is an ideal world. But let me ask you a question: What happens if you have tailwind? What happens if your aircraft is actually heavier? What happens if you're using anti-ice? What happens if you have altitude restrictions? What happens is that they enough we actually calculate the. Uh, perfect top of descent for you in order to comply with all these factors and still arrive on the run on the right position okay because let's think that we only uh, we perform the same calculation these 90 miles but in a different day we have tailwind and the aircraft is heavier so what will happen is that with a tailwind for example the aircraft will be pushed and because it will be pushed that top of descent sorry the descent will be shallower because of the tailwind okay so and then let's say that you are descending at, at 300 knots and you need to decelerate for landing because you cannot start from here and then land at 300 knots you need to land at 140 150 knots for example so in order to decelerate since you are already in idle trust my question is what you can do in order to decelerate if you're already in idle trust the only thing you can do is actually level off or make your descent shallower. So what will happen is that you have tailwind, you want to decelerate, and let's say you arrive at here, flight level 100, okay, 
and you arrive here and then you need to decelerate because below 5 100 you need to be 250 knots so since you're already in idle thrust you need to do an almost level segment reach the 250 knots and then start the same again okay then you when you arrive for the uh, uh, flap when you need to extend this, the flap you need to decelerate again and so on so what will happen as you can see is that you will miss completely the runway okay so the Multiply by three calculation is a rough number that more or less uh, gives you an idea when to start the descent. But the VNAV will actually take into consideration all these factors. So what will the VNAV will do? Depending on what you put in the FMS, such as the tailwind, such as the QNH, such as if you use the engine anti-ice, your weight, your altitude restrictions, your speed restriction, what it will do, the VNAV will actually work backwards. So we we'll say, okay, you want to be here, at this point in order to be here you need to do these last uh, three degrees okay descend for example okay but then since you need the deceleration for your flaps you need a level segment as we saw in this example here so what will happen is that it's going to add a level segment okay for your flaps deceleration then it says okay from here to there you need another level segment for your uh, flight level 100 deceleration from the 300 knots to the 250 knots so we'll add another level segment okay and then let's say because of the tailwind it knows that your rate your descent will be shallower so it will add it will actually project the shallower top of the sorry rate of descent and will end up with another top of descent okay this t d so as you can see these two uh, aircraft have a different uh, descent okay the, the aircraft they descended we draw up in the first place this one is actually an ideal descent with no winds no standard weight no deceleration nothing but the, the second descent the one calculated by the VNAV but actually take into consideration everything and by doing so you know exactly that your top of descent will be there and you will have all the Time for your deceleration, for your altitude restrictions, for your speed restrictions, for your tailwind, for your anti-ice and so on. Because if you don't take into consideration all these factors, you will end up high and you will have you will go into the high energy situation. Okay. All right, guys, what I want to make sure is that you understand that this was just a VNAV introduction video. The VNAV is a huge world, okay? We've got the VNAV path, VNAV speed, the geometric path, the performance path, the VNAV, the MCP, the altitude restrictions, and so many other things about the VNAV logic. So this is an introduction video, and my goal was to actually give you an idea of what VNAV is and how it works. If you want more video about VNAV and you want me to go in deep, just leave a comment below and I will make further videos. Also, let me know if you want me to go into the flight simulator and make a video where I actually show you how do we use VNAV in a Boeing 737. All right, if you took something out of this video and you thought it was useful for you, just give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, go to paddleclimb.com where you can subscribe for free paddle training content. And I'll see you in the next one.